Welcome to The Business Coach, a show in which you out help entrepreneurs better their businesses. My name is Ian Dennis and tonight on the show we're going to be exploring an industry that has been hard hit by COVID-19. I'll be engaging with Wanjiku Kandia, the founder of Oridi Events, who's going to be giving us a sneak peek as to what exactly is going on in the event industry. But before we get to engage in a conversation, here's a brief bio of Wanjiku. Wanjiku Karaoke Kandie is the founder and CEO of Oridi Events Limited, a leading and award-winning African corporate events management agency. She's also the founder and managing director of Events Warehouse Limited and the Events Academy. Wanjiku has overseen the growth of Oridi Events into serving clients in Rwanda, Tanzania, Mauritius, Nigeria through local partnerships and affiliations. Hi Wanjiku. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for getting time to speak to us. I know you told me earlier on you had to escape from your baby. <laughs> Working from yes. home, Manenos. <laughs> yes. All right, so let's just get into it. I want to just find out how are you and the team doing during this particular season? How are you faring? How are the operations like at already? I think we are doing quite well given the circumstances. Of course, um, you know, a business like ours is heavily affected because once the first uh, case of COVID-19 was announced, events just stopped instantly. But for us as a team, uh, before then we'd made some internal uh, measures. We had switched most of our operations to be consultancy based. So at least in terms of operating costs, we'd already managed to cut uh, most of our operating costs. But of course, we are facing what everyone else in the industry is facing. We have reduced income. We have clients who have postponed their events indefinitely and we also have cancellations. So it's, it's a new interesting space, but um, we're trying to, do, to be optimistic. Yeah. All right. And speaking about cancelled events, how, how exactly have you gone about it? Because I'm sure you already had a schedule for the whole year with clients already booked. Yeah. So have you gone, how have you handled that as a team? So there are those obviously that had to be cancelled, especially the ones where you are having international clients coming in. So Waridi primarily deals a lot with international clients. So those who are cancelled, the ones that have been postponed are the local ones. So what we're trying to encourage our clients is to look into using other formats like um, digital events or virtual events as they are called as a substitute for those that want to still continue having their events so it's we are all trying to figure out what to do right now but for us our strategy is to adapt as quickly as possible so that at least we don't lose out because we still feel like events can continue but in different formats yeah all right, and uh, about the team, because right now there's no event that's going to go on and you don't know for how long, everything's been shut down. Yes. And uh, you told me your team yes. is now working from home. What exactly is their fate? Because I know most yes. of the companies, because of lack of income, they've resorted there to unpaid leave or cut salaries. How have you gone about this particular situation? So for us, a large portion of our team was on consultancy basis. So we've not had to um, let go of anyone. For the team that's been left, there are some that are still on full salaries. Of course, for the project management um, team, we've had to negotiate for half salaries. But what we're doing, because we still had things that we wanted to do internally as we're ready, those still continue. So for, for us as, as a team, we just decided, you know what, um, we'll still try and figure out the goals that we'd set out to do this year, how we can do them in different formats. So the team, of course, we want to all be at an event site, uh, but we have to figure out, okay, now what is it that we need to do now? And we're moving towards figuring out how to still support our clients for virtual events, yeah. And speaking about virtual events and adapting to now the yes. new normal, how exactly is it? How are the clients mm -hmm. reacting to it? So we've noticed that um, the clients who are in the tech space are more open to um, exploring virtual events because it's been part of the event. So there, I don't know how familiar you are with um, in terms of events. Terms, but we have hybrid events. Those are events that have a component of face-to-face -face and have live as well. So and sorry, and have virtual events. So the people who've been doing hybrid events are more comfortable towards moving their events virtually. Mm -hmm. For the more traditional um, clients who may not be very very comfortable with tech, they prefer they preferred to push the events. So for us as event managers, what we're trying to do is figure out what, how do we replicate the core of our business, which is um, facilitating conversations through events online. So what we've done is we've created like an event, a virtual event planning service. So for anyone who's interested in, in taking the events online, we can be able to support them. 
but we've taken the uptake is pretty slow because local clients um, uh, are more traditional and are more for face to face. But for the international clients, we were getting quite a few inquiries. Yeah. All right, and because uh, events, it's a it's a two way traffic. There's you, the organizer. Yes. There's the client you're working with, but the most important is the audience or the, the persons coming to experience the event. How exactly has it been yes. on the audience side? How have they been receptive to the events that you're putting out, especially the online events? So for the audience side, one of the things that we've noticed is, okay, we, we wouldn't necessarily do a lot of paid events because they're the events where our clients would put out and want to get revenue. So you're seeing because there's all these events happening and all these webinars happening, most people are not charging for the events. So we've all had to adjust our fees and we've all had to figure out how can we still uh, make some level of return? Of course, the return wouldn't be as high, but what we're telling our clients is we'd rather do a virtual event than sit down and just not do anything. Even if it means the return would be less, and even for us as an agency, the return would be less, it's better. And then for vendors, what we're trying to do is we're trying to encourage them to adopt adapt their services. So for example, an audiovisual company that would um, sit down and provide the screens, um, the sound, what they can now do is provide sets for our clients, like studio sets, to be able to do, like if it's if it's a conference, a, a main panel. So we're also telling our vendors, don't just sit down. Also try and figure out how you can plug into this new format of, of events. Yeah. And uh, you've mentioned about now, it's now most of the virtual events are actually free. That's meaning that the business model of the events industry has been completely disrupted. So what's the new business model? Yes. How exactly can, are you, can you one survive in these murky waters that you've never been into? I think I, I'll, I'll, I'll say that we're all trying to figure it out, but there are people who are, there are different formats. So there are people who are getting um, sponsors to fund their events, because there is a lot of money, especially if you have events that are related towards COVID-19. So if they're raising awareness, there's people who are paying people to put out such events. And then we also have uh, people who are telling attendees to donate. So for example, if you have um, a webinar and you're teaching an industry how to, what are the best practices around this place, you're seeing a lot of people putting donating buttons where like, you can donate. So, and then there's also advertising opportunities. People are selling advertising slots inside um, the webinars. So revenue is not as we normally have but it's, it's a substitute given the times. Yeah. I've mentioned about donations. I know abroad it works because yes. <laughs> they're, they're different from us. Are Kenyans really donating in the webinars? Yeah. Yes, they do. Like uh, we, we did, we are doing our own in-house uh, webinars, educating. So we're having conversations as events people on on this whole situation, trying to, to sit down and figure out uh, what 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 should we be doing for our businesses? What should we be doing doing for our clients? And part of it is we have a, a COVID nineteen uh, fund that if we are, we're actually uh, running a campaign and people are actually donating, so they come for the webinar and we publicize. You need to help this initiative, and people are donating. You'd be surprised. Kenyans are quite philanthropic. That's yeah. very interesting. And. From this particular yeah. season, because as an entrepreneur, I think no one has ever been in such a situation ever before. What are some of the yes. lessons that are cropping yes. up for you as an entrepreneur and being in charge of your business? I think for me, um, one of the lessons that has always been there is adapting. So because I think what makes an entrepreneur an entrepreneur is the ability to discover what opportunities lies even in the, in, the, in, the, in the thick of difficulties. So for me, that has been one of the key questions that I've learned. The next is um, the makings of a resilient business. Uh, we had a webinar and um, we're talking about business resilience and one of the things that really came about, it's not about COVID-19, it's about how resilient is your business. So this opportunity gives me a chance to look at what is it that I need to do in my business so that if I ever come through another, go through another phase like this, I wouldn't necessarily feel the impact the way I felt it. The third thing um, that we've learned during this period is about industry collaborations and partnerships. Um, never has there been a time where the industry has come together as one. Um, there's no competition. It's just all trying to figure out what can we do to, to get events started again in Kenya. So just seeing people come together and a, a transfer of knowledge has been quite good. And then the last thing is innovation. Just figuring out for the for very, very long, the events industry 
took innovation being as you know buying audiovisual equipment no one ever thought about figuring out how we could do events online yes we have the zooms all these platforms that are coming up but they can't fully replicate face-to-face uh, -face because no one took time to figure out what will happen if we ever need to have a virtual event. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's the importance of innovation and where it lies in, in the industry. That has also been another lesson. Yeah. And before we go for a break, I would like just to get your insight. What do you think is the future of events? Considering probably let's say 2020 may just be wiped out just as it is, as the current circumstances are. What do you think is the future of events? I think the future events is what is happening currently, the present, or the present, the present where we are in terms of events. So the first thing is, I think uh, people need to figure out how to replicate face-to-face -face events virtually. Um, I know a lot of us planners are like, you can't, you can't replicate liveliness. But I think it's up to us to figure out with all that things going around, how are we going to sit down and still not lose the essence of events and replicate that online. So I think the future of events is virtual events definitely, and also hybrid events. Those will be more common for us. And then I think as business owners in this space, the future for us would be to asking, asking ourselves, what value do we bring? Where are we in the value chain? Are we just taking care of one aspect such that if anything like this ever happened, we're totally wiped out? So I think we'll see a lot of people doing uh, backward and forward integration and more holistic companies. That's what I feel would be the future of events. I'm not an expert, but I, that, I think that's what would be the future of events. Yeah. All right. On that particular note, you're going to take a short commercial break, but don't touch that dial. But keep it right here on The Business Coach, where we help entrepreneurs better their businesses.